So I would like to thank the organizer for providing me this opportunity to present this talk here. The title uh, is just uh, announced by the chairman, the Tensor Decommission Based Unsupervised Future Extraction Applied to Biomedics. Uh, my name is Wais Taguchi, came from Department of Physics to University, Tokyo, Japan. Uh, introduction. The, I'm not sure the people here is uh, familiar with the biomedics. The biomedics is a research field to analyze machine genomic data set using cutting edge computational statistical and machine learning techniques. And typically, uh, a biomedics uh, dealing, uh, deal with the data set uh, having a gene expression, uh, but the number of genes uh, up to 10,000. And if we are interested in the DNA mutation or DNA accessibility, so the number of future is much more than 10 to 7. And uh, there are some cases the number of future is less, but still the number of future, if we would like to deal with the micro and expression, the number of future is 10,000, oh, or 1,000. In spite of that, the number of samples uh, available is very limited, typically 10 to 100. Then, um, this means data analysis or biomedics is typical large piece modern problem. So I'm not sure if the audience here is familiar with a, a large piece modern problem. So I will explain briefly. So large piece modern problem means there are very limited number of samples, but with many features. Uh, it is very difficult to characterize the limited number of samples with a large number of features. The reason is following. As an example, consider to classify some novels into two classification, fantasy or science fiction. And in this case, the futures are the a set of words included in each novel. As the uh, examples of fantasy, uh, we list the Snow White and the Lord of the Rings and Knights of the Round Table. As example of science fiction, we list the Star Trek, X-Men, and Superman. So the task is to classify the Star Wars into science fiction or fantasy. So it's not easy task because in Star Wars, uh, uh, actors in Star Wars battle with each other using sword, but sword is a typical uh, weapon uh, appears in fantasy. On the other hand, in the Star Wars, there are many vehicles and some of the vehicles are spacecraft, and spacecraft is also a typical uh, big appears in science fiction. So it's not easy to classify Star Wars uh, into either fantasy or science fiction. And uh, this uh, example tells us that uh, only based on a small number of examples with many features, in this case, words, labeling a new title is not easy. And in biomedics, uh, samples are limited to 100, for the number of uh, features is huge. Then uh, uh, in such method, uh, uh, we develop a tensor device-based method to deal with the difficult large piece model problem. So in these talks, I would like to introduce some example of application of the method we propose tensor uh, tensor decommission based and supervised future exception to biomass problems. So, as the chairman has introduced, I've written one book on this method from Springer. And uh, I'm glad if the audience here can read this book after my talk. And uh, next, I would like to explain what the tensor is, because uh, possibly the audience here is not familiar with the tensor. Uh, scalar is just a number, and vector is a set of scalars in line, and matrix is a set of scalars aligned in the form of the table. Table means rows and columns. And tensor is uh, some kind of scalars aligned in the array more than two rows. For example, if uh, the tensor has three suffix, ijk, 
This can be uh, formatted as a form uh, rectangular, the, this H corresponds to J, and this uh, H corresponds to I, and this H corresponds to K. So XIJK can be represented as a form of rectangle. And tensor is a suitable uh, format to store complicated genomic data. For example, we have G expression of N genes of uh, N persons of K tissue. Uh, this uh, data set can be stored as tensor because the, so this is a tensor and this H corresponds to J, which means persons. This H corresponds to genes, which means I, and this H corresponds to K, the, which corresponds to tissue. So clearly, a uh, tensor is a suitable way to store the genomic data set uh, if it's more than uh, three uh, features. Then the next, I would like to explain what the tensor decomposition is. Because uh, I'm not sure if the audience here is familiar with the tensor decomposition. Tensor decomposition is the expansion of a, a tensor with a, a product of some vectors. So the first vector is attributed to the genes i, and this UL1i is L1's dependence upon i. So there's a many dependence of i. And uh, similarly, uh, there are some vector which represent the dependence of J, J now is a person, and there's many kinds of dependence upon persons, the, the UL2, there's uh, kind of dependence upon J. And similarly, uh, we have also many kind of uh, dependence upon K, K is tissues, so, the, the, so tensor uh, can be expanded by the vector a product of vector uh, that represents uh, dependence upon genes and persons, tissues with the weight of uh, G. And tensor decomposition has some advantage. So we can know the dependence of X, I, J upon I with a vector of L1, I. And also we can know the dependence of X, I, J, K upon J with a vector X equal to J. And we can also know the dependence of X, I, J, K upon K with a vector X equal to K. Then uh, by investigating U L 3 K, we can know what kind of uh, tissue dependence can appear. And uh, investigating the U L 2 J, we can know what kind of Dependence upon person can appear, for example, distinction between healthy control patients. And then we can find which uh, vector attributed genes are uh, mostly associated with this combination. And then we can select the genes which is associated with this one specific tissue specificity and uh, this distinction between healthy control patient. Uh, by selecting the gene having large absolute value of this vector. Now we can answer the question, which genes are expressed between the healthy control patients in some tissue specific manner? For example, which genes are expressed in healthy control in kidney? Which genes are expressed in patient in heart? Now, uh, I would like to apply this work frame uh, to two uh, real examples. First example is a drug reposition for COVID-19. Uh, this study has already been published last September, and since then uh, it has been accessed more than 5,000 times and uh, cited uh, 11 times. Then the data set analyzed in the study having uh, this number of genes, uh, 21,000, uh, but sample. Uh, it's composed of the cell line, five, the five cell line, and so there are two dis, uh, distinct uh, experiment conditions. The, uh, the cell lines infected by SARS CoV 2 or not. And this combination is repeated uh, three times and uh, by its replicate. Then the uh, whole data set can be expressed as a tensor uh, XIJKM. I means uh, one of genes, one of 21,000 genes, J is one of five uh, cell lines, K means if it is affect, uh, infected by SARS-CoV-2 or not, and every represent one of three replicate. 
And uh, this tensor can be expanded the series of the product of these four vectors. The, this vector represents the de dependence of five cellular ring. Uh, this vector represents the distinction between the infection or non infection. And this uh, vector represents the dependence upon by three bias replicate. And the last vector represents the dependence on genes. And this is the weight of the product of these four vectors onto uh, XIJKM. Then the uh, audience should know this is a typical large piece one problem because number of variables here it is genes is more than 10,000, but the number of samples uh, only 30 because five salary and two uh, uh, experiment condition, the infection or not, and the three bytes replicate only 30. Then uh, ratio uh, between the number of futures and samples 1,000. So it's heavy large piece one problem. The purpose of this study is to identify the L1, L2, L3. Uh, this is a, a, a cell line dependence and uh, infection dependence, and this is by the replicate. And the L1, L1, J, and L3, J should not ha have dependence upon J and them because we would like to find genes whose expression are independent of uh, type of cellular in and uh, independent of the biological replicate. But uh, for L2, which attributes the distinction between the uh, infection or not, this should be distinct between the infection and non infection. So this, this, this vector should be a reverse uh, if uh, it is infected, non infected. And uh, uh, fortunately, we can find this such kind of vector. First vector attributed to cell line have all those constant value for five cell line. And the second vector attributed uh, distinction between infection and infection has opposite sign. And the first vector attributed by the replicate is have constant value. So selecting L1 uh, equal one, L2 equal two, and L3 equal one. We can satisfy the required condition, mean independent of cellular in and virus replicate, but distinct between the infection and non infection. Then, next, we have to uh, find the genes uh, whose expression associated with constant uh, uh, for cellular in, the constant of virus replicate, but distinct between the infection and non infection. In order that, we would like to find which G have largest absolute values with, with fixing one to one. So, and L4 is uh, attributed as a gene a vector attributed to the genes. Then the, we can find far fifth uh, uh, vector uh, is most coincident with this uh, future, the constant for cellular in, the constant of virus replicate, but this is distinct between uh, infection and non-infection. Then we decided to employ the, this vector attribute genes to select uh, genes. We would like to select uh, genes whose uh, attributed uh, component uh, the absolute value is large. Then we assume this always Gaussian distribution. Uh, this is null hypothesis. And attributed the p-value to ice gene using chi accumulated chi-square distribution. And the p-value is corrected by Benjamin Horn method because the number of genes are so huge. And finally, we have found 160 genes associated with uh, adjusted p values less than 0 0.01 among this number, this huge number of genes. Next, we would have to validate if we can uh, successfully select uh, uh, genes related to uh, SARS CoV 2 infection. This is a uh, SARS CoV 2 protein, and this p value uh, about the uh, 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 overlap between the uh, human genes, which are known to uh, interact with this uh, uh, SARS CoV 2 protein, and 163 genes I have just selected. As you can see, fever uh, is very small. So uh, this means uh, for all uh, SARS CoV 2 proteins, the genes I have selected uh, largely overlap the uh, gene, human genes interact with SARS CoV 2 protein. Thus, uh, my method successfully selected the limited number of genes, uh, which are large overlap with human genes are uh, interacting with uh, SARS-CoV-2 protein. So it is very successful. 
Next, I would like to uh, compare uh, my performance with other methods. Uh, t-test is a very popular method to select variables distinct between two uh, cases, in this case, uh, infection and non-infection. I apply t-test for these five cellular in separately, and uh, result is terrible. In some cases, no genes are selected as distinct between infection and non-infection. Some is more uh, specialized method to adopt the selection of genes and gene expression, but uh, uh, result is much worse. No genes are selected for all five cellular in. And finally, we uh, applied our, our advanced method, LIMA, which is specialized to uh, selection of genes in gene expression profile. But in this case, the opposite, it selected too many genes. In this case, uh, the, this method can have uh, ability to select limited number of genes, which is uh, distinct between the infection and non-infection. And uh, finally, uh, we test more uh, advanced, uh, most recent method, DSEC2. Then uh, th this is a uh, uh, number of genes selected, and uh, number of genes selected uh, vary from cell line to cell line. The bit is very unstable, and sometimes uh, the this method select almost all genes. Some cases very limited number of genes. So anyway, uh, this method clearly inferior our method. So our method is the best method to select genes whose the expression at this case between two conditions. Uh, infected cellular in and non-infected cellular in. Uh, now I would like to discuss a second example of application to VR exam. <clears throat> second example, the integrated analysis for gene expression profiles with a sample matching. So this uh, study has been published uh, in preprint here. It, uh, it is not yet reviewed, but uh, I would like to introduce here the newest study. So, I have decided to introduce this one. So if you are interested in this talk, so you can check this preprint later. So this is a DOI. And uh, the integrated analysis of gene expression with a sample matching uh, common labeling is difficult. For example, we have uh, M1 sample uh, for which you have gen uh, measured energy expression. The samples are composed of healthy control patients. And similarly, we have uh, M2 samples, which compose of uh, knockout genes and wild type with the same number of genes. If we uh, directly relate these to the experiment, it's not easy because uh, they are not uh, common uh, labeling. If we can do this, there's a many uh, usage. For example, uh, Gene expression is uh, some gene expression similar with uh, uh, gene expression caused by uh, gene knockout. Or if we would like to integrate the two single cell line, uh, two single cell gene expression profiles, uh, because single cell cannot be labeled. And or we would like to compare two different processes of two different species, for example, human mouse. Uh, uh, it is not easy because these two species are completely distinct time development. The method is very simple. Uh, tensor dimension applied to tensor of band of low dimensional embedding obtained by applying SVD to individual data set. And copy the single, uh, single level vectors are mapped back to the indiv uh, individual data. So suppose we have two uh, gene expression uh, composed of the energy and uh, M1 sample and M2 sample respectively. Do we apply the single level decomposition to have a lower dimension of the embedding? So this L, L is a smaller uh, number, M1 or M2. Then we can have a low dimensional expression. Then the applying uh, this vector, this red vector is production matrix uh, of M1 space into L and M2 space L, uh, low dimensional uh, projection. Then uh, taking a product of this red matrix and origin genes profile, we can have a low dimensional expression of N genes. Then we collect it. Uh, the K is the number of gene expression we would like to integrate, and we can have uh, tensile L times N times K. Then this can be expanded uh, in the form of the, uh, tensor 
And uh, this is G, and this is uh, low dimensional space dependence, and this is uh, a data set dependence. K is a number of data set which we have integrated. And using a uh, low dimensional uh, uh, projection uh, matrix, we can uh, convert it as a obtained uh, low dimensional expression to original uh, sample dependence. Then we can check uh, this uh, sample dependence uh, is uh, coincident with the original classifications. So this is the result. And uh, the data set we analyze the Alzheimer's disease. First data set is uh, having this number of genes and nine samples. Nine samples compose three controls and three ATP duplication. This is the genes which is known to be altered for Alzheimer's disease. This is a cell line is collected genes by uh, gene editing technique. And uh, this is uh, treated of two classes. And the second data set uh, composed of this number of genes and 23 samples. And 23 samples compose four classes uh, if the two genes are locked out or not. Then the, these two genes are also known to be altered in the Alzheimer's disease. The last one, uh, having uh, this number of genes, uh, these samples, and eight sample composed of the uh, uh, AD, uh, two types of uh, some disease, cellular E and one control, this is regarded to so three, uh, three classes. And then uh, we consider this number of genes as, as a missing value and feeding with uh, zero value. And uh, we consider random space as low as eight because the eight is the smallest number of samples in three data set. Then this is the result. The first uh, low dimensional uh, vector, uh, if it is mapped back to the original space, the coincident with uh, all three data set classification. The second was coincident with data set two and data three. And the third one coincident only data one, data two. And the fourth one coincident was data three. So this is a, a classification a vector mapped back to original data set. And this one is for data set one, and this one, and data set one and two classes. And this is data set two, data set two is composed of four classes. And this is data three, and this is class three. For example, for this case, we have this three a sample dependence, so we can know what kind of sample dependence coincident with each other. And this is a, this one, this one. That so uh, for, uh, we can know which kind of sample dependence is coincident with each other. And uh, for this, that we can have this, and uh, we can know what kind of uh, sample dependence coincident with each other. Next, we select genes using this. This is a summation of a, uh, low dimensional uh, embedding. And this is a table. And uh, this is a dependence of the data set, the dependence of the genes. And we have found uh, first five genes having the largest uh, absolute values. Then we have decided uh, the, the uh, vector to select the genes. And uh, UL1 assumed to obey the multiple Gaussian and P values attributed using a chi scale distribution. And the people is corrected, I selected uh, hydroxychloroquine genes. And this is an analysis of selected hydroxychloroquine genes. As you can see, Alzheimer's disease can appear here and here, and there are many related uh, neurodegenerative diseases are also enriched. So this method uh, correctly select the genes which are related to Alzheimer's disease. So the integrated analysis is successful. A summary of this part. And uh, in this case, uh, we can integrate the GX profiles. It does not have uh, uh, correspondence among samples. And uh, also, I did not explain the, this part. So if you apply the single cell RNSEC, we can also deal with uh, this number of single cells uh, correctly, and we can integrate it. So that's all I would like to explain here. Uh, here is a contact information for me. If uh, you are interested in my talk, uh, you can uh, send me emails and uh, or you can access this homepage and I'm happy to discuss with you with these topics. Thank you very much for your interest. That's it.